Hello everyone, welcome back to the Launchpad. We are here discussing the recent announcements at reInvent and bringing you directly the service teams to talk about it. It is a great pleasure to have here one of the most exciting features this week for me. And without further ado, the DynamoDB team, I will let you present yourselves. Uh, I'm Tony Petrosian with the DynamoDB engineering team. Jeff Carrier, I'm with the DynamoDB engineering team. Okay. Hi, I'm Jim Scharf, I'm the general manager from DynamoDB. And could you just give to someone that just dropped on the stream and know nothing about AWS, where we could start a rough outline of what DynamoDB is all about? Yeah, DynamoDB is our highly available, highly scalable NoSQL database. Uh, one thing that people don't, uh, often don't understand is how much uh, AWS depends on DynamoDB. Uh, for example, when you bring up a new region, you can't even uh, boot up EC2 in a new AWS region until DynamoDB is up and fully operational. Uh, so AWS depends on DynamoDB. Uh, lots of Amazon uh, properties from the retail website to your Alexa uh, devices to the fulfillment centers, as well as a wide range of external customers like Lyft and uh, uh, Samsung, et cetera. So in, basically people rely on DynamoDB from really mission critical workloads that really have to scale, have consistent uh, performance, and always be available. Cool, and um, we're here to discuss the two new amazing things you announced this week. So let's start with backup. Uh, what are the challenges of backing up data at this scale? Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, one of the things, you know, when a uh, backup restore sounds like a simple thing, uh, you know, hey, I have a database, I want to back it up. Uh, but at Dynamo scale, we have customers with single tables that are, you know, uh, trillions of items in them or hundreds of terabytes uh, of data spread across potentially thousands of physical machines. Uh, so at that scale, Backup Restore is actually uh, a really difficult thing. And we're pretty excited about what we launched. Uh, it, it, we can do, do all that at our scale uh, with basically almost instantaneously with no impact uh, to your application. Cool. Um so app for app developers, is there anything they need to change in their apps to take advantage of this or be more friendly or less disrupted? Yeah, absolutely not. For app developers, they don't have to do anything. In fact, one of the great things about backup is when you actually go to make an on-demand backup, it has no impact on your workload. So if you're running an application and you're consuming resources and we're at the same time running a backup, it will not impact your application. You wouldn't even know that there's a backup that's running and it's done in a, in a second or two. And how uh, does it work, the life cycle? Is it incremental? Is it always full? How does this work? So the way it works is that we have on-demand backups where uh, you can choose to execute backup whenever you want. Uh, either you go to the console or you can do it through an API or command line. Uh, and that is for the purpose of when you want to do a backup at a specific time, at a specific state, and hold on to it perhaps for many years uh, to meet your compliance requirements. We also have a point in time restore capability which relies on a backup which is continuously running and continuously making backups. And that gives you the ability to uh, go do restores when you make a mistake, you know, when you accidentally delete a row or accidentally do to make changes you didn't mean to do in one of those situations, you go, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Then you can go do a point in time restore and perhaps go back two minutes cool. before you made an error, or go back five days before you made an error. Uh, and so we retain uh, the data for 35 days, and you can pick exact minute that you want to go back to and restore a table to that state. Awesome. I guess that the easier way is to just take a look at it. Yeah. OK, cool. So here, uh, we just have a sample table, uh, November sales data here. Um, and just showing you, you know, it's about uh, 30 gigabyte, uh, almost 20 million uh, items in it. And uh, currently, I am also just driving a little sample. This, this bottom screen here is driving some sample load into it. Uh, so you can see it's actively taking traffic, put traffic right now. And before I do a uh, backup, I'm going to go in and show getting very consistent put latency, which is one of the characteristics you expect from DynamoDB. The, the consistency of the performance is really one of the defining characteristics. OK, so now I want to take a backup of this November sales data, because now we're closing out November. We're going out into December. Uh, and I just uh, click Create Backup, November sales data. Re uh, I'll just do Twitch uh, Backup. And now watch closely. 
done. Wow. Uh, and, and so now you see the back up here, uh, you know, the, the size and all that. And a little while later, I'll come back uh, and show, uh, you need a, a minute or two of metrics to come. I'll come back and show you on the latency was unaffected uh, during that backup. Awesome, awesome, very, very cool. And the other great thing is, and everybody's asking about it, is global tables. So well, could you tell why is that important to customers? Yep. Yeah, so global tables, first of all, we're really stoked to kind of put global tables out in the market. Some of the team's been working on it for some time. And I think when we think about global tables, we tend to think about it uh, sort of from two points of view. One is uh, solving a, a real compliance problem that a lot of customers have for disaster recovery. And the other is a brand new capability that we're really excited about, which is this multi-master uh, write capability uh, that we think is really going to power a lot of new scenarios for customers. Yeah, and what everybody's asking about is that defeats gravity. Like, is capturing no longer valid? How, what's the magic here? Uh, it's, it's I didn't catch the first part of the question, I'm sorry. Cap like, uh, did you beat the cap theorem? Like, oh, did we beat the cap theorem? <laughs> no, 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 the cap theorem is, uh, is still in place, but I think what we've done is we've been able to sort of uh, introduce some novel capabilities in terms of how we actually replicate data to do cool. that. Right? Awesome. Um, could you tell us a bit more about how that goes on and what developers need to beware when writing their apps to be global? Yeah, so I think first of all, I think there's a couple principles you want, principles you want to remember. First is data locality. Um, I think traditionally a lot of people have in their mind this idea of I write uh, my data to one location and I can you know let it replicate out to all the other locations where my data is present. But you don't really need to do that anymore. Now uh, you're, you can actually sit to wherever your customers are. You can write to wherever you want and read from wherever you want. And that's got a bunch of really interesting and positive properties to it. One is, if you think of like a ride hailing app, I can go through and get a more responsive customer experience simply because I can access my data faster than I could previously, simply because the physics are better, right? Yeah, and how does it work for, I mean, you, when you have scenarios such as conflict, yeah. what do developers need to worry about this? So yeah, so I think you you want to be thinking about like where the rights are taking place. Obviously, it's best if you can sort of get rights occurring in one region or another. It reduces the possibility of conflicts. But ultimately, we'll take a, a last right or wins conflict resolution policy for you. So the system will hand it on your behalf. Cool. And what about consistency? We know that reading from DynamoDB, you can choose between That's right. uh, two consistency modes. Does that change in any manner? Uh, so today, with global tables, you still get you know, because global tables are just like any other Dynamo table, you can interact with them however you want. Um, cool. You know, sort of if you want to span across different regions, most people tend to think of that uh, supporting mostly eventually consistent rates. You can still get a strongly consistent rate, but you need to go to the point that you've elected as your master to get that strongly uh, consistent rate semantic today. Awesome. Could we take a look at it? Yeah, certainly. Um, and before we go into there, I just want to just go back, uh, you know, to that backup we saw. And you see, now that we've had a few minutes for the, for the latency, no latency impact to my app uh, that was still, still writing there. So, so that's closing up that one. And now let's go to uh, global ta tables. So the first thing is we just create a table uh, just like any other uh, Dynamo ta table. So I'm going to just create uh, re uh, reinvent ID. I'm just going to use the default settings, which includes auto scaling on, which is something we really recommend. Auto scaling is now the default for all new Dynamo tables. Uh, since uh, June when we launched, customers are saying that's really powerful. Uh, particularly with global tables, it's really important because uh, you know, the tables have to have the, the right uh, capacity for all the regions that are writing back and forth. Uh, so we highly recommend leaving uh, auto scaling on. I'm going to create this table. It'll take a few, uh, you know, maybe 30 seconds to create. Uh, and so then what we'll do next is we'll then uh, go in uh, and create a global table by adding additional regions to this table. So now that this table is created, I go to the global tables tab and you have to uh, enable streams for this. So I'll click this because streams is what we're using as part of the replication uh, mechanism uh, to enable the multi-master replication of global tables. And now I'll, I'll add a region and so uh, currently, uh, I'm in the Oregon region in my console here, and you can see other regions that are available for uh, global tables right now at launch uh, are Frankfurt, Ireland, uh, Virginia, and Ohio. So 
first I'll create a uh, one for Ireland, and I'll hit OK. And now right now what it's doing is it's going out to the Ireland region, creating uh, a table that matches my reInvent uh, table here, and applying the settings to that. And then I can go and add another, uh, let's just say Virginia. And then Let I can me ask you yes, something sir. there. Uh, does this impact performance? Like if people add more regions, should this make their table slower or faster? Uh, no. So, so first of all, again, it's important to remember that global tables are just DynamoDB yeah, tables. So you interact with them however, just like you do today, and you get the same you know, single digit millisecond latency that people have kind of come to know and love about Dynamo. Yep. The replication takes place asynchronously and usually occurs within a, a second or two. And so uh, if, you wanna, if you wanna read from another region, you may see a slight delay just as that replication process is taking place. But within the local region, you should see the same performance you, you know today. And just out of curiosity, how does it work? Uh, the master, the origin, dispatches the data to all regions at the same time, or is it like one at a time? Uh, it, it will go parallel, so it's, it's, and it's just the regions that you've specified that are part of the replication relationship that you've set up for your table. Okay, awesome. Okay, cool. So in the meantime, when you guys were talking, I added uh, all five regions to this uh, global table. And now, um, so this is my Oregon. Uh, I can you know, create an item, one, one, one. And then since Dynamo, you know, you flexible schema, so I can add whatever I want here. Maybe I'll create a, a message. Uh, and I'll say, hello, from Portland. And then I'll hit save. I see that here. Uh, then I'll switch uh, to another tab here where I will uh, uh, where is Ireland? There we go. Table. And okay, now here's my reInvent table. And now I see my hello from Portland. Uh, you can also see that we add in a timestamp in the origin region where it came from that helps us with the conflict resolution that Jeff was talking about. Yep. Uh, and then, of course, I can create an item here. Uh, you know, uh, 999 uh, string. Back, hit that back, and then of course when we go back to uh, Oregon and refresh, we'll see it there. But awesome. that's kind of a, a pretty simple, you know, that's not so doesn't really convey the multi-master capability uh, that we're talking about. So I have two scripts here. Uh, one is just l let's say I have a ride-sharing app like Jeff yep. is talking about, and let's say I had uh, a, you know a service in the Oregon region or somewhere in the U.S writing to uh, my reInvent table here, and it's going to load some traffic there. And then let's say I had another uh, service in Dublin uh, loading, uh, writing uh, ride transactions in, in Dublin. And you can see uh, you're going to get, the very important thing is the apps will get the local performance writing to their local regional tables uh, read and write. Uh, which is really distinguishing uh, for, for global tables. Yeah. Here, here in, in this demo, I'm going from my laptop to Dublin. If I actually had an EC2 instance from Dublin, it'd be done by now. Yeah. Uh, awesome. And because then, this is the most thing that comes up in the chat, how performance in and how yep. latency looks like. Yep. Yep. So applications can expect the same local latency, Absolutely just right. a regular yes. DynamoDB Standard. table. And One no, and single no digit change. millisecond, yeah. as yeah. we say. Yeah. And um, what can take a while is the replication between regions. Or yeah, that takes right? a second or yeah. two. And yes. I think just to, just to double down on the point I think Jim was making is that it's an excellent one, which is just that, again, because it's a global table, it works with all the, all the other features that you've kind of come to know and love with the service. So TTL, auto scaling, and whatnot. Yeah, and you mentioned about auto scaling, and this is the full and very yeah. recommended, but what if people want to provision capacity? Should they think about the global aggregate capacity, the local capacity? How does provisioning work? Uh, they do have to think about it in the aggregate, right? So you do have to think about the rights that are taking place uh, in all of your regions and compounded with the um, traffic, the right that you're going through in the local region as well. And so that's why we recommend auto scanning is just sort of to demystify that process for a lot of customers. And also, it's to your advantage, frankly. Like, you know, it, it is simply is the case that traffic patterns ebb and flow, and those are things that are very difficult to, uh, to sort of predict ahead of time. Uh, where is the case where I think, like, you know, like, my, I'm going to get a spike today or tomorrow or next week, right? Rather, it's the case that you want the system adapting for you automatically 
and adjusting your capacity as you need it. Interesting. And um, is there any side effect or a special case, that, that corner case, that people should not use this, or like when people should use regular DynamoDB and when should they use global tables? Well, I think on this one, Werner gave a talk this morning talking about the reliability from the, the pillars of the well-architected program that helps guide. You, you know, it's basically saying, hey, I can't remember, the, I think it, like if you need two nines of availability, hey, a single availability zone could be okay for you. If you need uh, three nines, you want to probably go to two or three a AZs. And then he was pointing out that if you, but if you need like five nines of availability, uh, that would be a use case where you definitely would want DynamoDB Global's tables, because now you have uh, your data rep, you know, across multiple Amazon regions. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's one, uh, uh, but I mean, frankly, I don't know, can you think of a reason not to use it? No, I mean, I think a lot of people have very strict compliance requirements, to be yeah. quite honest with you, mm -hmm. that you want this for cont business continuity, right? And so, I think that will drive a lot of people to use it. And then I think what's exciting, what's more exciting is sort of to find out how people are actually going to use the multi-master capabilities. Because I think, you know, as a team, like, we have our own sort of ideas about how people will use it. Yeah. But frankly, we know that, like, just the innovation that other teams and other companies are going to come up with are going to be way more different and stretch it in ways that we hadn't anticipated originally. So I think it's exciting to see how the app patterns change as a result yeah. of that. And is there something you expect there that you see people building with this that there's was a couple hard to like I, like a good one is like user profile homing. You know, so if I if you can imagine like I spend my winters in Seattle and maybe I vacation on the East Coast, uh, I as I'm on the East Coast I change something about my Netflix profile or something like that. that those commits happen locally. And then when I return back and I make another change to my profile, the data gets rehomed basically effectively in, in Seattle or in Oregon where my data center is. And so, oh, that's just one example, but there we know there's many more. Yeah, and how pricing looks, is it much more expensive to have a global table? Uh, so pricing is published, but uh, I think the way we look at it is you pay for the data transfer costs uh, yeah. for the, all the data you're transferring across the wire. That's pretty common. That follows our standard pricing model. And we've introduced a new pricing model for replicated write capacity units, which cover our overhead for running our service for that. Cool. And it's an uh, awesome value, by the way. Yeah. That's it. And anything you'd like to leave out or expect for developers trying it out? I think just really just go try it out. You saw how simple it was. Uh, you know, you don't have to change your applications to try either backup or global tables. Uh, you know, Dynamo, of course, has a, a free free tier for anyone new to Dynamo. Yeah. So uh, really, just go check them out. Both yeah. are GA today, yeah. uh, and we're really excited to get the feedback and see how customers build with them. Awesome. Yep. Thank you much. Thank you very much, guys, Thanks, for everybody. being with us. Thanks. Thank you. And keep keep in tune. See you in a minute.